Oh, see, you'll blow me for $10, but you won't clean my wheels for 20 <laughs> You hoes have no work ethic these days. Jeez. Oh, crap. I'm recording. Well, good morning, everybody. Just getting my beard, uh, you know, straightened up. Cause I'm in here filming some 17 hertz. <laughs> like, literally, I filmed a lot of 17 hertz this morning. Nasty, and it's cold out. But uh, anyway, guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's having a really great day. Staying warm. It was like in the 20s here this morning. We've warmed up a little bit, though. We're like in the 30s now. Got my coffee. So, uh, yeah, I got a decent little subject today. Not great. It's great for somebody, though. New base heads wanting to get in this game. You know, somebody asked me what are the things to look out for and really the main thing to look out for when you want to get into base and be in a base head is you're never done. You're never happy. You want more. Uh, and that's just the way it is. That's the way it is for a lot of things, you know. Having base in your car is like building a drag car. You build a badass drag car and it goes really fast. And once you get used to that speed, you want more. So you'll get a build, you, you know, you'll save up, you'll get it done. And you'll be like, oh my God, this thing is like stupid loud. You won't want to roll your base knob all the way up at first and... Within a month, you know, you've done pegged it out and you're like, yeah, maybe maybe we could add two more subs back there and another amp. That's just the way it goes. Uh, so yeah, beware. Definitely beware of that. Uh, and then understand what you're doing would be the next thing. You know, a common thing I see, and this just makes me go like, oh my God, oh my God. When people are showing off their system in them Facebook groups and they're like, my gain's only halfway up. Well, good job. It's not a bass knob or not a uh, volume knob, you know. Gain ain't got a whole lot to do with nothing. I mean, it does, but it matches your RCA signal. You know, and if you have a radio that is uh, not even putting out a vote, then to get that amplifier to make that power you got to match the gain knob with whatever that RCA is putting out. So if it's putting out like a half vote, you're going to roll that gain knob three quarter or, you know, 0.8 of the way up. But if you have a in dash, it puts out like a solid six vote. You might just barely bump it up and it's maxed. I mean, it's like, you're not going to get no more out of the amplifier clean. And so many people don't understand that. They act like, you know, they're hot shit. Like, yeah, man, my game was only halfway up. Good job. <laughs> so you found a distortion point, right? <laughs> uh, so there's things like that to understand, you know, amplifier settings. When I adjust an amplifier, I turn my high pass filter all the way up. I adjust my gain knob appropriately and everything else I turn all the way down. And what's sad is the amplifiers. I love these DS18 uh, Hooligan KO amps. I love them. But the damn subsonic only goes down to 10. I wish there was a way to turn subsonic off. Uh, I found out playing 10 hertz in here, it doesn't do a whole lot because the subsonic on the damn amplifiers are killing it. 13 hertz, pretty, pretty great, you know. But that 10... And, I mean, the subwoofers, they ain't doing... They're moving. It's just... It's like they're not getting much power. And it's because Subsonic's, like, really filtering out that 10 hertz, which kind of sucks. But, uh... There's nothing I can do about it, honestly. Now, guys... Being a bass head. You're going to tear your car up. That, that's something to consider. You're going to tear your car up. I, I don't care what you get. If you get a decent system at all that... It's up around them like 150s. It's going to do something to the car. Uh, another thing, it's an expensive hobby. 
I mean, yeah, you can build a little budget banger system out the gate with a cheap brand of subwoofers and stuff like that, but you're going to wind up replacing all that in a year or so. I mean, it is what it is. When I built this thing, I was on a pretty, I said a good budget for myself. I did American Base XFLs. They were great. They got me to 160 dB. I built the enclosure out of the cheapest pine plywood that I could find. And it's still in here. But it's three quarters of a layer thick. Great. Um, you know, just the building supplies to build this was expensive. But the thing is, you know, those subs didn't last long. I put an M, I started one MD8K. Did okay. An MD12K. Got to a 59. To get to that 160 mark, it took two MD8Ks at a half each. And I had so much power on them, even set super clean, I could only turn it up for a few seconds before I smelled the subs. And yeah, it burped a 160, but they blew. And then we'll get into wiring, guys. You know, CCA wiring, It will, will it work? Yeah, definitely. I had all CCA in here swapped out to OFC, and I gained zero, nothing, nada, zip, zilch. But I wired for my current from the alternator's back. Most people don't realize that. You don't need eight runs of wire from the front to back. You know, most uh, most wires rated like in voltage. So they say 600 volts for uh, a 50-foot length. Now it's OFC, you know. See, you're, we're, we're going to say half of that, 300 volts. But that one piece of CCA at 300 volt, it's going to handle, let's just say, a solid, a solid 200 amps or 300 amps. I'd say it would handle over 300 at a 12-foot run. So if you got a 270 alternator, that can safely handle 300 amps at a 12-foot run. You've got a max of a 12-foot run. You're going to be golden with CCA wire. Upgrading ain't going to do a whole lot for you. Uh, so do two runs of CCA. And here I had uh, two runs of CCA from front to back. And like I said, it did great. I changed that and all the wiring to my amplifier so I've seen gained nothing. But... The thing is, starting with CCA, down the road, you're going to want to change. Because in a year, I changed. I put OFC in. Uh, so try to buy good equipment out the gate, man, if you can. That's that's my like recommendation. Yeah, you're going to be saving up a little longer, but get good stuff. Because you're just going to wind up replacing it anyway. Even when you get good stuff, you're going to wind up replacing it. But it'll have a better resale value, so you'll get more out of it when you go to sell it. And I know everybody's like, oh, man, Scar is the shit. Scar is just as good as Sundown. I'm going to tell you, at the end of the day, what it comes down to. Say so you have a set of, which the Z-Series Scars, they, they are good for numbers. They sound like garbage. I mean, that's, the VXF sounds way better. It's a way better demo sub. But everybody wants them Z. So you got a you got two 15 inch ZVXs. You list them for sale. And then you have two Sundown X series subs. You can list the Sundown X series for twice or three times what you can the scars, and they're gonna sell quicker. That's what it comes down to. I'm not bashing any brand, I'm just spitting facts. The Sundown X, you're going to have like 40 people in your inbox wanting to buy them. So they're not going to, you know, try to get you down on price because so many people are trying to buy them that somebody's going to pay what you're asking if you're within reason. But you can have them Scar ZVX there and you might get three people in your inbox and they're all going to lowball you, guy. That's just facts. That's how it works. That's what it is. Because uh, at the end of the day, the market is just so flooded with Scar. And... Sundown, is, they just have the reputation. Me, I I love Sundown. I had no problem with it, guys. Myself, I like being the oddball. You know me, I want to run something that nobody else is out there booming. I want to prove you can get loud with damn near anything. That's what I do. You know, I had 
Started with American Base XFLs. Okay. A lot of people have them. That was my beginning budget sub, but I got really loud with them. Well, 160 on 415s with cheap subs. You know, they were like right at 200 each. And then I put the prides in here because not many people had pride audio. I think I was like the third or fourth person in the U.S. to have them. I did great with them. But when it came time to swap up, you know, I got on the G2 bandwagon. I put the prides in my wife's blazer, but they're coming right back out. Like, joop, right back out. And uh, I have some Synergy audio. WFO is coming for that. So, you don't see a lot of people running Synergy subs. You know, their amps are proven. They nasty. They, they, they do work. I mean, Synergy, they, they got some of the, like, top dog amps out right now. Uh, some I went to, I'm going to give you some honorable mentions that I really was considering putting in the wife's blazer. The Dead Game Huracan V3. So, shout out to Dead Game. And you can, them are badass subs, guys, and you can get them right at G2 Dynamics. Tell them Jerry sent you, hell. Uh, but, yeah, those, those subs, I mean, they are nasty and they do work. It's just, I wound up getting kind of a deal on the Synergy, and they are very, very impressive looking subs, and the TS parameters on them are great, all except for... FS, <laughs> but you know, the TS parameters you read online, that's a brand new, just sitting there subwoofer. So once you get the old spider loosened up, the FS is going to drop like a girl's panties at a frat party. So we're not even worried about that, but that's another thing that you should do. If you're planning on getting into car audio, learn how to read subwoofer parameters, learn what a lot of these terms mean that's used in car audio. Learn about your electrical. Electrical is key. You should definitely upgrade your electrical before you even think about putting an amplifier or something in your car. Do the big three. Do you know what the big three is? Huh? I'm wait. You don't? See? There you go. Oh, you do in the back. Okay. But now, for the guy that said he didn't, that's something you need to know. Because you can't just slap a high output alternator on your car without upgrading the wiring under the hood. You know, all these things work together, man. Your electrical, the the grounds coming from the alternator to the chassis of the car, to the body of the car, everywhere else, it all plays an important role in this, you know. Batteries, you got your you got your nice alternator. What you doing for batteries? You know, are you gonna jump on some budget lithium? You gonna go straight for C Max? What you gonna do? These are all things you need to learn. And if you're wanting to learn more about any of this stuff, like lithium, the Facebook DIY lithium group, uh, you know, jump in there, do a lot of reading, because there's a big difference between lithium batteries that are uh, rated for solar power use than there are for car audio use. Anyway, guys, I hope this really helped answer some questions about being a new base head. Definitely enlighten y'all on that gain knob. So, y'all, leave that gain knob alone. That ain't a volume knob. Set that thing where your amplifier is putting out some clean signal. Leave it alone. And uh, bass boost, keep that all the way down. You don't need that for nothing. <clears throat> I don't even know why I put that on amps. But anyway, guys, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Stay warm out there. Peace out, guys. And as always, bass on.